New York and on the new Hot 97 app. Ebro in the morning. On Hot 97. Ebro in the morning, Laura Styles. No Rosenberg, man, but we got rapping ass Boz from Dreamville on the program. One of the most yes, underrated, uh, underappreciated rappers in the game, I'd say right now. That last project, Milky Way's Fire. Thank you. Then you came back super flames on the Dreamville. What was the joint before Milky Way that I love? Uh, too High to Riot. Too High to Riot. You was really high during that album, too. I was. Yeah, you was really was low. <laughs> you was really high. <laughs> Amazing album, though. Thank you. That was when we got cool. What was my fa- my uh, what was my record I was playing the shit out of? It was about drugs. It was good, though. Uh, good. Methalone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was the shit. It. it was a conscious drug record. I mean, yeah, you was trying <laughs> to, like, get your get yourself together. Right. And now, now here you are on a Monday on Ebro in the morning. You didn't even go to the club last night. I'm sober. I'm hydrated. I got the glow right now. And y'all, Dreamville had a number one album. Yeah, for real. Revenge of Dreamers 3. Yeah. Big um, moment. How many? So you're on a total of what, like three, four, four, four three, records? Four? Yeah. Um, what was that environment like recording the album? Because I definitely feel when I when I looked at and listened to what you was doing on this record, you made sure to assert yourself in a yeah, you in had a certain to. way. You had to. It was like you know, creative summer camp. You know, we, we got to build a lot of good bonds with people that we was already cool with, but once you really camping out in the studio. You know, um, but on top of that, there was but so many, you know, microphones and mm. studios and songs being so done. So you had to shine or you wasn't yeah, on the album. Yeah, yeah, you had to get right. When you heard something, you had to really be assertive about it. So was there a uh, a convo, a team huddle, Dreamville huddle, or some sort of shit that was like, listen, here's the rule on Revenge of the Dreamers 3. As a collective, if you don't show up and your shit is trash, you not make an album. Was that said um, or understood? I think that was understood. There's verses that got cut, you know, from a bunch of songs that are that are on the album. Because at the end of the day, you want to make it like a cohesive record. You can't just have, you know, a million dudes doing 16s. Um, that the don't song have nothing to do with of one another. Right, of exactly. So nobody took none of that personal. They just knew, like, all right, this is the way the song shaped up. This Who, is the best who's song. Who's the final say? Uh, Eve, Eve and Cole. Mostly. Bosses. Those are the bosses. It's yeah. always interesting because nowadays, even when we talk to artists, when we talk about collaborations, right? Because you never know if they were in the studio vibing. And I just think, well, to me, from the outside looking in, it's a completely different dynamic. Yeah, for sure. Because we did two other Avenger Dreamers, and it wasn't nothing right. like that because right. we're, like, emailing songs in. Right, right, right. Or, like, right, yo, right. you know what? That dope record you did, let me get that for this. Um, this was 10 days. Every song was done in 10 days. Every song was done on the spot. And then it was just like post production and mixing them after. And so, what happened in Costa Rica? <laughs> Costa Rica, man. That, <laughs> that's a um, that's Jameson and Don Julio fueled ooh, ooh. five a.m. Just who's left, you know? Last where, man standing. Yeah, <laughs> where are the wolves at right now? And we kind of all congregated in the, in the A room, and it just went crazy from there. And so there was recording that took place in co- in Costa Rica, or oh nah, nah, we haven't been yet, but we're talking about going to shoot the video out there. What's up with that, man? Costa Rica's you super gotta dope. go, man. It's coming, right? Line it up. We need Costa it. Costa Rica's fire. Yeah, I've and, been and once. The, when, and when the sun starts to set over the jungle, and you hear them big ass, <gasps> they're little small howler monkeys. The first time <laughs> I was there, I thought it was some gorillas in the mist yep. shit. Yep. Oh. <laughs> they got true. these small monkeys that sound like giant silverback gorillas. <laughs> For real. Not kidding. Damn. We got to put them in the video. The, yeah, the howler monkeys, monkeys. monkeys. Y'all, they real. They bug out, just, too. Just, you got to put one on, like, buddy's dangerous. shoulder. I wouldn't fuck with them. I'd leave them alone. All no, right. I would definitely leave them. They sound no like they can do something. They no sound cameos. like they get busy. All right, bet. Um, Boz, um, you're f- originally from Queens. Right. Um, Born and raised. No, nah, I was born in Paris. Born in Paris. Yep. Uh, moved to Queens when I was eight. We lived like three years in France, uh, five years in France, and three years in Qatar. Um, and is that because your dad was moving around? Or? Right, right. He was diplomat, so we were just moving around a lot when we were younger. How does your dad, who's a diplomat, and I think your so- you have an older sister yep. too? Yeah, she works at the UN. Yeah, she's accomplished. Right. And then the rest of y'all are DJs and rappers. Yeah. How did that go over at the? A uh, bit of a culture dinner- shock at first. <laughs> You know, I got the benefit of being the youngest of five, so my older siblings broke down some barriers for me, for sure. That's now, big. That's yeah. big, because you didn't have to catch the heat, uh, the yeah. pressure of, like, this, this is what you're going to do. Especially, you know, immigrant parents, but you got to be a doctor, you got to be a lawyer, yeah. you got to be, you I mean, know? Momo was an engineer. 
Oh, yeah, that's right. He was yeah. accomplished. He was an engineer, and he was yeah. doing that and DJing until, like, he just couldn't do both anymore. But at that point, my parents were like, well... Well, DJ is getting the bag for DJ Momo out here. Right. There's a nice bag coming with him. Right, 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 right. <laughs> He's doing so, all right. you know, he kind of uh, he kind of killed everything. So by the time I got around, I was dropping out of college. It was like, man, just go go do what you got. They were like, this American entertainment thing actually. Yeah, can... it's a lucrative business. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Right. Um, you um, you're about to drop a new project, right? Yeah. When does that happen? Um, August 9th is the first part. It's like an episodic thing. Um, it's a lot of collaborations I've been doing. Some that started at Dreamers, others has just been linking up with artists. Um, you know, just trying to get more music out. Now, did um, did uh, the last project? Well, how long ago was that? Has it uh, been a year yet? Like end of August, it'll be a year. So it'll be a right around a year. Right now, you're seizing the moment, though. This is, I think, you you saw this Dreamville thing. Yeah, revenge. percolating. You were yeah. like, hold up, I'm gonna seize this motherfucking heat right now. Yeah, here. yeah, we got a wave. You know how it works. So you was right. Now, do you have to, how does that work in a camp like this, in an environment? Do you have to um, go to the squad and say, hey, listen, I'm ready to go. Here's my idea, concept, because I know you guys are very organized. Yeah, I mean, I, we've always had, you know, a lot of creative freedom. And when it comes to dropping things, um, you just got to have your eggs in order. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, what, you know, what's your promotional, you know, did you shoot any videos? Are you doing X, Y, Z? So at this point, I did this enough time to be like, all right, look, I got all this, you know, coming up. I'm doing this to support it. Like, let me at it. Do you, um, your tour, you tour, you sell out, like, between, like, 2,000 and 6,000 tickets, potentially, on a lot of your concerts, right? Like, that's... More like 1,500 to, to, to like, two. Yeah. 1,500 to two. But you tour the world. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like, consistently touring. Right. So how many, how many days a year are you out doing shows? Probably, like, six months. Out the year for like the past, I don't know, because I was out with Cole for a minute, and then I was opening, and then ever since then it's just been not, you know. Then it went on the headline, and and you know, just keep putting out albums and doing it, running that cycle. And you don't even really trip on like radio main, you like you do your thing. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the benefit of of what's happened with streaming. You know, is it's, it's easier to find like a your pocket of your fan base and social media speak directly to your fan base. So you kind of got to just work that and then just have faith in that. And do you, now who owns Fiends? That That's me and, and like a few of the homies. So you own the merch too? Yeah. Damn, you caked up. I'm working. Let's get money out here. Nah, he trying to play it low. He trying to play it low. <laughs> you You're touring six months a year. The Fiends merch shit is crazy. Because y'all sell out of all your shit. Yeah. And it's all online business. Right. A few pop-ups here and there, but no brick and mortar. No wonder you're not stressed. Nah, I'm not. And so now you're in the club every night giving money back to strippers, bartenders, and... You know. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, Contributing you gotta, to the community. You got to pay it forward. <laughs> you got to pay it forward. Contributing to the community. Um, Can you... Did, did you go to St. John's too? No, nah, I didn't. I didn't go to St. John's, but, you know, it was, like, in my backyard. Might as well have been a townie. And how did you meet Cole? He was going there with Eve. But you're younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I used to, like, throw mad house parties. They would come through. We used so to you used the plug? Yeah. You used the plug? I was, you know, I was one of the local Queens kids. I was just kind of running amok. Mm. And so, did were you rapping at the same time as Cole? No, nah, no, nah, I wasn't. I didn't start rapping probably till like, Three years after Cole got signed. And so you, it was that something you just decided to do to be yeah. a part of it or like... Nah, it was it was my friends talked me into it one night. Um they all went to NYU. I used to DJ all their after parties. Cause I had dropped out of school. Moma gave me his his old laptop and was like, yo, just start opening gigs for me. You're not gonna just be a loser sitting in mom's crib, right. mom and dad's crib. Right. So I was doing that, I was running around DJing a bunch of gigs, started DJing for the NYU basketball team. We had this crib down on like Bleecker and Seventh Ave. We used to go in there. They'd pull up the laptop, start rapping. You know, it was trying to talk me into it. I'm like, man, I don't rap. Like I grew up with a million dudes in New York that've been rapping my whole life. Like, right. that's not real to me. Uh, but you know, we did one night, and and I got addicted to just the form of expression. Like the next day, I was like, damn, like I was just 
It was fun to express so myself. Good to yeah. get that out. So you guys just started, we're just freestyling. Yeah. It'd be like 11 minute songs. You know what I mean? Right, you right, hear right. like, you're you like, I didn't know I had it in, in me back. to keep up. Right. And then, and then there was gas in me too. Like, we'd wake up because we'd be faded half the time. Like, wake up and be like, yo, you know, like, it's, it's a joke to us, but like, you're actually kind of decent, bro. <laughs> you know, you should, you should keep going a little bit. Here we are. Backhanded compliment. You kind of decent. Kind of decent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what your people say. Yeah, love, though. You got to gas, but you got to, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Right. You right. Yeah. You've been very vocal about um, educating people about what's happening in Sudan. Mm-hmm. Can Can you talk about the, the type of reactions you've been getting? Yeah. You know what? It was real encouraging and inspiring because... Um, at first, that wasn't necessarily something I was too comfortable doing. Yeah. It just got, the situation got to a point where it was, you know, you kind of got to look at yourself like, well, you know, you, you, were, you know, where are you going to stand on this or, you know, how are you going to look back on this time? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I just kind of said some things from the heart and the way people responded to it and, and you know, started sharing and um, everything that came of it was like, oh, man, um, it taught me something just about a platform you know you might not always think right, people right, right. care about what you have to say um until you try to say something and then you're like well you know damn that was effective what was uh because you you mentioned being a little uncomfortable like talking about it what was going through your mind like what would you think people were going to react i don't know i i guess um you know i didn't want to be like overly like political in a sense um it's a it's a weird line as an artist that you kind of have to like mm-hmm. straddle because I'm I'm not like you know there's guys that are really like dedicated to that full time and they rap about it and they talk about it like all you the time. Be fake. Yeah, you know I didn't want it to be like a, a promotional tool or you know what I mean. I didn't ever want it to come across as that, but you know like I got a lot of people on the ground, family. Um, you were the first person I text. Yeah. And the whole thing started, you know, because. You had peaceful protesters. Mm-hmm. That's right. You had a government regime that's been in there since independence, pretty much. Right. right? Um, the young people, I think a large percentage of the population is youth. Super, yeah. Right. And they are active now and they yes. want their government to, you know, be progressive and, you know, move forward. So you had peaceful protesters. Right. Right. And they were, you know, getting the I think the the president to step down was Yeah, it was a it was a large sit in. Pretty much in front of his palace, um, where it was during Ramadan too, so they would break bread, they would, you know, um, watch soccer games, they would sing songs, poetry was read out loud, you know, paintings, which is a, a lot of things that weren't really allowed under the regime, because um, it was so strict. Like, you know, music wasn't really allowed, the arts weren't really allowed, so it was that was the biggest form of protest. It was a lot of chanting, a lot of songs being sung. And, you know, eventually he stepped down, and it was a, a very short-lived celebration. Because um, then the military turned on the people. Right. He pretty much, his dogs just took over. Um, and so basically, imagine imagine what just happened in Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. but the but the military starts turning and shooting people in the street. It's insane. I know. I saw something. And going in the neighborhoods, crazy. raping women, killing people, peaceful people. Yeah. Dumping bodies in the Nile. Like, just wild. Now, um, where are things at today? So they're having talks now um, to try to come to an agreement. Who's they? It's, it's the military and pretty much the SBA, which is like the Sudanese Professionals Association. It's an association of like 17 trade unions, doctors, lawyers. They were like integral in, in really the whole movement. Um, Imagine that. Doctors and lawyers. Yeah. Protesting the government. Yo, America, take notes. For real. For real, that's a good point. Powerful people, educated individuals who know what the fuck is going on, actually standing up and doing something for a country they claim to believe in. Right. This is happening in Sudan. Right. And by the way, if you know this world, and I know you probably don't want to get into this, but this is my own take, my own personal take. Mm-hmm. The world seems quiet about what's going on in Sudan, don't they? The major superpowers, you have innocent people being shot by the military because they want their government to change. Right. Well, most of them just don't want to cross the other the other powers in the region, which is really like Saudi Arabia and the Emirates. You know, there's 
there's too many people. Too because many. they have interest in Sudan staying in control. Right, and they Stay and, in and they they you know a, a popular uprising like that is is worrisome to a lot of those regimes in the area because it's like damn like if if our people see them doing that and being effective then we might have to, to deal. Too. Right, they don't want something like the Arab Spring the popping Arab Spring, back up. Right. But I will um, tell you that you speaking about it, it was so important because I, I, I know a lot of people learned about it through social media. Yeah, now, I hardly saw any of the news sites covering it till later. Right, I mean, because the people made enough noise yes. about it, and then they turned the Wi-Fi off or they did something to control. Yeah, they the turned voice. they turned the internet off for over a month because they just wanted to stop, you know, footage from getting out there and people on social media. Obviously, we were getting everything. Everyone in diaspora was getting everything sent to them, either cell phones or videos uploaded on Twitter, and then we could share that and the images and the news coming out. So they just cut it off for a month. Um, Sudan's been an independent nation for how long? Uh, like the mid-50s. And then this this regime took over about 30-something years ago. So for the majority, the vast majority of... of it's been two regimes, basically. Yeah, that's it. So, and I and I say that to give people context because here in America, we're going through our own shit right now. We've been an independent nation for almost 300 years or something like that. And we're still trying to figure it out. And a lot of judgment gets passed on these developing nations, right? Because they're, there's corruption or this type of thing going on with military government. And people are quick to say, well, they should do this and they should do that. A lot of these countries are just figuring it out. They're coming out of, of colonialism, right. right? Where their their culture or you know their natural resources were being extracted without them seeing any. Which financial never really benefit, ended. It just still became goes on. it just became like Greece the top dog, right? And you know that's why you deal with so much corrupt leadership, really a, across the continent. You know, at, at various points, it's just they've learned to kind of make it financial. Um, you know, you get one guy to kind of bully all the people. And you just pay him for the goods. Mm -hmm. And so, and then the politicians obviously often are on the take. And they're not making sure that, trick, that, the, that there's development of middle class of course, of and course. development of yeah. industry. They're not making sure any of that happens. It's just, I'm going to get what I can for me and mine. And, you know. And the world superpowers get it on the cheap, so they're not going to disrupt it. Right. I just got to take care of a few of them. Take care of Russia, China, America, and Europe, and everybody's going to leave me alone. Right. And I can be as corrupt as I want to be. So what happens next after the SPA and the military the, works this out? You know, that's what everyone's a, a bit worried about. No one knows really how genuine it's going to be. You know, like the women aren't even being represented in the talks, and they were a huge part of the revolution. Um, we just don't know and, frankly, don't have much trust um, in the process. A lot of times, to me, it feels like it's just there was so much heat that it's like, all right, well, how do we try to pacify the world a bit, you know? So I think it's very important to just keep our eyes and attention on it um, because, we, you know, the details of... They haven't really released any details. They you just, know, this is generational, though. This won't be fixed. The, these things don't get fixed next week. Right. This is your... For you and your... your this generation of Sudanese, the diaspora or people who live there, this is your life of making sure this an eye gets kept on this and a standard gets set. Right. And you know we discussed mean? that. We just we definitely discussed that. I mean, we're amongst the privileged, you know, to be able to grow up in the West and have these opportunities and financial ability to to change our lives and the lives of others. Um there's a lot I want to do for a free Sudan. Um that'd be a dream, you know. It's just a it's just very crucial how these things get worked out. Delicate, you mean. Right. When you say crucial, you mean you got to move right. Right. Um, Sudan. A lot of people don't even know that the Nile runs all the way down to Sudan. Oh, yeah. We got the White Nile and the Blue Nile. Tell me what that is. Um, so one one comes from the mountains in Uganda, another one comes from Ethiopia, and they meet in, in Khartoum, our capital. So you could actually sit there and see the Blue Nile meet the White Nile. It's, it's the only place that happens. And... Um, Pyramids exist in Sudan. Yeah, they predate the Egyptian ones. Where the you know oh, the wow, Kush. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that. They say that the builders of the Egyptian ones were from Sudan. Right. So when you if you actually go kind of travel up the Nile, which was pretty much like the ancient highway for homies, you could see the pyramids. 
the you know? homies. Shout, the out, ancient, to the shout homies. out to the ancient homies. <laughs> um, actually, the, the cover art I shot for Milky Way was yep. when I went to the Pyramids of Meroe, which was like a two-hour drive from my parents' crib. Um, and and those are like the, the real ancient. Like, those are like some of the first pyramids in the world. They are like 4,000 years old. So now, mind blown, who did they tell you that built the pyramids? There you go. I'm going to just leave that there. <laughs> the builders of the pyramids likely look like my brother right here, Boz. Yeah. And there sure. they were women. Like, the majority of the of the rulers, the Kandaka, are, are like the warrior queen, um, which actually is, is where the name Candace comes from. Um, so they were, like, our, our kings, really. Mm-hmm. Sudan, y'all better pay attention. These regions are... are are uh, highly contested for a reason. Yeah, they don't want you to know. Yeah. They don't want <laughs> the information history. out. They That's don't want it shared. They don't want you awake. They don't want you to know the natural resources that are in the ground. They don't want you to know the real people who actually built this stuff. Pay attention. I appreciate you, brother. Hey, appreciate you. Appreciate Yo, the and, um, any of this information, right, as, you know, because there's a large Sudanese population here in New York City, and I'm sure they're paying attention Right. But I would love to share this because I don't think that people relate what's going on, whether you're Puerto Rican or whether you're black or whether right. you're from Man, Africa directly Chinese, look or at Hong Chinese Kong. or what. Yep. People don't relate what's happening with these governments that it's all tied together. Like people don't people think these are isolated things. Brexit. Right. Right. Trump. Right. Boris Johnson. Uh, North Korea. Russia. Mm-hmm. No, the whole world's in it right now. Saudi Arabia. People don't connect those dots. Right. Right now we're all we're all going through it. Um, this project spilled milk. August yes, 9th, sir. we get our first look. Yep. Um, what should we play off the Dreamville project right now? Ooh, uh, I gotta go with Down Bad. I mean, that's the heat rock out there. That here. is the heat rock. I and mean, you like that because you really I got off. You kind of bodied everybody on this. <laughs> <laughs> Pause, man. Give it up for him one time. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>